Moms, welcome back to the channel. And today we are talking about relationships with toxic in-laws. such an intimate difficult discussion topic we should be comfortable and create an intimate setting as we're bonding over these horrible experiences that we have um instead of doing like a formal studio setup that's right yeah um i don't think this is anything we've ever talked about before i don't even think i've given nuances i think i've been very careful about what i've said yeah i don't think I've talked about um, it before. Yeah, so this is primarily going to be, well, no, it will be about uh, my in-laws specifically. Melinda has phenomenal in-laws. She's very lucky that way. Um, I have the cool parents in my marriage. So um, as I've mentioned, you know, Rick, so Rick and I at, the, at this moment, uh, we've been together for about seven and a half years. Our eighth anniversary will be at the end of this year in December. Um, it'll be five years married, three years dating. Dang, you've been married for five years? Almost. <laughs> Carry on. I mean, our son is three. We got married a oh, year before. Right. Yeah, before we were pregnant, and then he was born the year after. They're not three. Yeah, that's a lie. Um, and I, when I say this, so it's so it's kind of interesting because Melinda has been on this with me like from the beginning. Like she's had to be there through all of the LA stuff, um, except a very small portion of time, um, and has been there like and has seen it, and has been probably one of the few people that didn't try to make me feel like I was just crazy and not. You know, because my parents try to come from this place of, like, um, neutral ground. Like, my, my mom is really good about telling me things like, well, you know, as a grandparent, this is how I might look at something. Or as the first grandchild or him being the first to get married. And, like, she tries to give me perspective. She's really good about stepping outside of it. And it took until recently for her to be like, I got nothing. <laughs> like, um, so we bought our house in 2019. Um, and that first year in the house, so by that point, Oliver was one. Um, and then of course, by the holidays, he was like one and a half. And so that was, that entire year was a really good year. Like we got a long, right? That was the year. I think. Yeah. That was a really good year. It was. Yeah. Like, so that guys, was a really good year. So like we hung yeah. out just the two of us. Like when I had said something about going to Augusta to see my family and my dad and my mom were going to take Ollie to like a pumpkin patch for the first time, um, to, to do pumpkins and the grandkids are going to come over and we we're going to carve them and blah, blah, blah. Um, I could see that she was like upset. So I made a point to let her take Oliver to a pumpkin patch. Like we went mm -hmm. just the three of us. Like I made every effort and did everything I could think to do to let her be a part of things. But so we had this big blow up because we had, she had been basically begging to keep Oliver a couple days a week when Rick worked because she wanted the time with him. Mm -hmm. And we were like, no, because you're unreliable, you're insane, like, you'll get pissed off at us and you won't keep him. Like, there were all these fears in the back of our mind. And so... How long did she keep him? She didn't oh. the first time oh, that she was supposed to. No, I'm it's getting there. Oh. Yeah. So Sorry, so on. at the end of that year, um, Rick's sister came in to, for Rick's dad's 70th birthday. This was... The beginning of December of 2019. Right. Um, and so then... Uh, while she was here, and pretty much every time she comes, is like, it must be like a stressful time for Rick's mom. I'm not really sure. But she's always off the chain when Rick's sister is in town. Like, easy to argue with, picking fights about every little thing. Like, she's just, like, super crazy, like, the whole time. And, um, which is so silly. But it, she, it is what it is. So, um, at that point, we had decided that we were going to give it a shot. We were going to let her keep all of her. Um, Rick was due to start a daytime schedule with which at the beginning of the year. January, January 11th was going to be the date, and that would have been January 11th, 2020. So um, she had been asking Rick apparently for his schedule, and he never got it to her, blah, blah, blah. Well, we've already had multiple conversations with her about the fact that like, when she needs stuff like that, she really needs to ask me, which is 
typical in a lot of households. Mm -hmm. The woman is typically the person that does the scheduling and plans everything and knows everything that's going on. So it's just a lot, a lot of the time, it's so much easier to get a straight answer because they're the ones that like know what's going on. And had she done that, she would have known a month ahead of time. Mm -hmm. But because she refused to communicate with me, because she still wouldn't, even after things were really good, like she would make comments about what Oliver was drinking um, because it wasn't water all the time and like make things. But she never said anything to me because she knew I'd say something back. Right. And so um, it was it was never asking me about things. It was always going through Rick. So she refused to use me as a resource to help her life be a little less stressful because everything stresses her out. And so um, it was so it was so funny because like we were in the car. I still have these pictures of these text messages, and um, mm. she texted Rick and told Rick that if he didn't get her the schedule that she needed today, that she uh, wasn't going to keep Oliver for us. Or something to that effect. It was a, like a much ruder version of that. It was something yes. about like, a, I don't remember exactly what it said, but something to that effect. Yeah. Essentially, like, if you don't do this right this second, when she's had months, she could have asked me. Because right. the date was set in stone long before it happened. And, um, yeah, and so, like, I texted her back. And point blank, I just said, you know, that I... Um, this is the date, you know, and I reiterated, I said, you know, I said, hey, this is Angel. Um, I kind of thought we were past speaking to each other like this. It's been going really well. Um, but if you if you need things like this, it's always better to ask me. I will answer you right away. I'll get you whatever you need. This is the date. And we were uninvited to Christmas because of that text message. Yep. So it was okay for her to send a text message and be rude to Rick. But the moment that I stood up for him, which apparently also makes me a bad wife, um, not to him, to her, um, was all it was like just abs like absurd because she needs to be respected, but nobody else has to be respected. So that was kind of the start of things getting worse. <laughs> um, that happened and um, they didn't see us or Oliver for almost four months. Um, we made the, we, we didn't really have much of a choice. Rick had already put in to start the new schedule. So Melinda, y'all seen videos from that time frame. That was why Oliver had to go hang out with Melinda a few days a week when I had to work. And then, unfortunately, this, I, I'm not glad COVID happened, but it's timing lined up really well because then I was able to be home with Oliver for almost six months. So, you know, when I, when I started my new job in September, we approached, you know, Ellie and was like, hey, you know, are you going to be good to do this? And she was. She changed her schedule. It all went very well for a little while. But I had kind of at that point made up my mind that I was never going to let her back in because I had tried so many times and you can only be spat on so many times before you're finally just like, you know what, this isn't even worth and it. And we had like so many conversations about it too because like that previous year was so freaking good. Like... And then she ruined it. By like, flying off I, the handle. I read the messages. I think I read the messages to my mom because we were on the way home from my nephew's college graduation. I was in the car with Aria and my parents and Angel called and she was like crying, upset. I was so upset, yeah. And like not I don't even know that you were pissed off yet. You were I was upset. Hurt. I was and hurt. hurt. Yeah. Because that whole year had been so good. Like I, it just didn't make any sense that it was so good up until that point. And then it's always Christmas. It's always, Christmas. It's always the holidays. Like, it's always that time. This past holiday was the only holiday we didn't argue, and it's because she got what she wanted. Because we were here for the day. Yeah. We didn't go. Because we did, you Christmas know, we're starting to do Santa with Ollie on our own, having yeah. our own thing. So, um, yeah, it, it was ridiculous. It but, was. And, and it was. And she's, and she's very much the type of person. And it was a slow... To let her, like, the time. And they didn't even reach out, though, right? For a they, while. They, no, they talked to Rick. They did talk to Rick. But, you know, uh, when That's it comes right. to the children, the mommies are the decision makers. That's right. And so, and it was funny because when Rick and I had our first conversation, so this was when Rick started to kind of shift into understanding a little bit more because he grew up in a house where he was told to just get over it and make her happy because that's what's easier for everybody. And so, um, yeah, no, they reached out to Rick. And at the beginning of that time frame, and that happened in January, and you were keeping him for that little bit of time before yeah. I was able to work from home, um, you know, Rick was very on board. He understood where I was coming from. I was like, you know, 
they they need to make things right. I said because, and I'm not um, because I feel like people are going to hear this and be like, you "Kept your your son from his." That's not what happened. What happened was she made a conscious choice to be pissed off at me and not spend Christmas with her grandson. She yes. uninvited Oliver as well. She she told Rick's sister she could come, but that Angel, Rick, and Oliver were not invited anymore. Yep. And that continued. And that is not okay with me. No. My child is not going to be this like up and down for you when you're pissed off at me. Yeah. Because the reality is if she had said that she still wanted to see Oliver, as upset as I still would have been, I would have never told Rick he couldn't take Oliver to go see her for Christmas. I would have never done that. Right. But she made that choice. Yeah. And so that choice lingered until she apologized and made things right with me. And that was never going to happen. So, you know, at the beginning of it, Rick was like, yes, I agree wholeheartedly this the, we gotta stand firm on this blah 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 Until which i knew February. was gonna last about 30 days i said that did i not yeah, did. in about a month he's gonna want it to be over with because he idolizes his father and he wants to still be able to have normal life he wants them in oliver's life yeah. i honest to god don't care if they're in oliver's life um but it's important to him fine so okay it's important to him that's fine but i told him so when it started to get bad and he was like i really want to just move on from this i said we can move on from this when your mom makes it right with me but until that happens there's no family time like that's not happening so finally one night they agreed to come to our house but ellie will not speak to me on the phone she wouldn't meet me in person to talk she had to have jim here in case i jumped on her i guess i don't know when was this like april maybe this is before i lost my job yeah, so it was... Well, because they were... But I was already... They were, they were there for his birthday. So it was before his birthday. Yeah, so it must have been. It's been April. That's, like, that's a good four months, though. Yeah, I knew it was close to four months that they didn't um, that they didn't see him. And so... Um, but yeah, so they came over and they sat down. And the first thing Jim said when we sat down... Well, you don't think you did anything wrong. And I'm not making this up. You don't think you did anything wrong, and we don't think we did anything wrong, so we just need to move on with it. And my exact response to that was, okay, well, that's not how adults handle things. And Rick said, <laughs> he goes, no, you're going to hear what Angel has to say. And I'm thinking, oh, God, he even got abducted by aliens. <laughs> Who is this I person sitting on my... And it's also, I will say this, and I don't know if this is like caveman thing, like those things that like you know, like you need a protector or whatever. That was like one of the hottest things I'd ever seen him do. I was like, oh my God. So anyway, so, yeah. and then, so the, oh, and I forgot about this part. So that same day that we had that argument, Rick's dad lied to him and said he was going to come over to fly drones. And we all thought, well, that makes sense. He probably wants to get away from Billy. Really. This is after we've all been uninvited to Christmas dinner. Oh, yes, back in December. Yes, back in December. I That's forgot right. about this. This is an important part of the story. Yes. So Jim lies about why he's coming over. He comes over walks downstairs away from me um because they know i'm gonna stand up for rick and um literally is down in the basement screaming at rick you you know you don't pay bills here right like so like literally like rushed rick you need to sit down and you need to listen to me right now like he was 10 years old also, don't talk to your 10-year-olds like that. No. But that's like, but it was like a very like, and and when he told me that that happened, I was like, absolute, oh man, I was ready to go over there and fight. Like, that's I was like, absolutely angry. not. I told him, I, and so, so, without me having to say anything, the beginning of that conversation was, but before Angel speaks, Dad, I need to address the way you came over and spoke to me the day that this all went down back in December. Mm -hmm. He said, you cannot come into my home and speak to me like that ever again and and i forget what else he said something to the because it wasn't in front of oliver he was completely alone i think oliver was actually napping when that happened I think so. and so um, but anyway but yeah and he i mean he told him he was like you were not to speak to me like that ever again in my own home the grown man yeah you don't get to come into a child or not oh what was like, really crazy and it's probably because i was sitting there but what was really crazy was jim just said okay <laughs> I was like, who do they think you're going to kill them? I don't know. I, they must think I'm psycho. Like, they, <laughs> they really do act like I'm just like this horrible, and I've never even yelled at them. I've never cussed at them. I've never argued with them face to face because they won't let me. Like, I've never like, you know, and so, so in that conversation, because it was a very long conversation, I basically 
let me see if I can condense this. I basically told them that they had already made it abundantly clear that I was not a part of their family. And then I told them, but whether you like it or not, I'm a Krause. Mm -hmm. Legally mm -hmm. and now genetically, like I'm you're not getting rid of me. And I told and I did say this face to face, I said, and at the end of the day, if Rick and I got divorced any, tomorrow, guess who you still have to deal with until Oliver's 18 years old? And I pointed to Oliver's room because it's to our right where I'm about to point. Mm -hmm. I said, because as long as that baby has anything to do with anything, I will always be the person you have to deal with. Mm -hmm. And um, and at that, that was also, I think, the time where Ellie had reached out to my mom and told her not to tell her she messaged her, but basically wanted her, she her she to her. call me and basically make me see the error of my ways and make it right. And so my mom being me as an adult, as an older version, um, I don't know where she thinks I got it from. And so, like, my mom told her, she was like, we don't keep secrets in our, in our family. Like, that's not how we do things. So not only is she going to know that you reached out, she's going to know everything that you say. And I'm not getting involved. That's what she told her. She's like, I'm not going to tell Angel how to feel, how to react. I'm not getting involved. And I was like, man. And that still wasn't an eye-opener. Fun fact. So, you know, they left. And things were, were really awkward. And then they got into, like, a smooth transition. But ever since then, every couple weeks, there's something new going on. Something that starts out. And it, what it is is it starts out as always these, like, little small little jabs at me. And then over time, those small, small jabs turn into a very big tear. And I get really angry. And I, it's like, and, it, and it's so nice to feel now that I feel validated because I'm glad that my parents are now validating me. I'm glad that now Rick is seeing what I have been dealing with for the last like seven and a half years because what has happened is that um, little things have happened where she tries to control things that she shouldn't have control over, for example. Um, there's a lot of these. So, for example, um, when COVID got really, really bad and she was keeping him right when I started my new job, I didn't want him going out to do public things. I didn't want him in big groups. I didn't want him out. Um, that Not was, even to the grocery store. No, he didn't go anywhere. No. That's my personal choice. If yeah. you're one of those people that think COVID doesn't affect kids, that's fine. That's on you. But my kid was not going out into the middle of it. And I found out after the fact, even though I had explicitly said this already, that she took him to this, like, train museum with a bunch of other kids. Well, then she, 4th of July weekend, the week, well, I'm sorry, the week before 4th of July, she had um, food, food poisoning. poisoning. So she didn't keep all of her all that week. And uh, Rick had to call out. I had to do work from home. Yeah. Um, it was kind of like, it was a lot. It, it became a big thing. Like, she went to the hospital, like... And they literally, was, they literally said, no, it's food poisoning, like, go home. So, now, and, and so, you know, Rick actually went to see her twice at the hospital. He was texting her. He talked to his dad a bunch of times. Like, I didn't, but they don't care about me. So, you know, I just didn't, Rick would tell me what I needed to know. Um, and she wasn't losing no sleep overnight here for me, I assure you. But so, um, fast forward to the weekends, the 4th of July, we have the gathering on Sunday. Rick invited them to come over. Well, his dad was like, well, your mom's not going to be able to eat anything. She had food poisoning on Tuesday. I had my gallbladder removed, and I was back to normal in four days. Was Ready it, to eat a steak. Was it just that previous Tuesday? Yeah. I don't know why I feel like it was longer than that. Well, it extended time. longer than that. That's true. So, she, uh, so they came, and she um, went up to the top of the deck to talk to Rick, and Rick talked to her and asked if how she was feeling, and she goes, I don't really want to talk about it with that right now. We can talk about it later. Also... This is important to the story, I feel like. We were the first first people to see them when they got here because they came in. Oh, y'all were out here at we the same were, time. We were, yeah. We had just gotten here and like maybe a minute later we were still getting all of our stuff out of the car. And I wasn't feeling well that day. But I asked her. I said, she came up and I said, uh, we said, hey. I said, how are you feeling? And she was like, oh, I'm Okay. I said, okay. I was like, yeah, Angel told me about, you know, the food poisoning. I'm like, I'm so sorry. And, like, and she went, like, to the backyard. You know, so there are people who asked how she was feeling. Genuinely, I did genuinely ask. I'm like, how are you feeling? How are you doing? Carry on. Yeah, so, and then, like, there were moments where she'd be perfectly fine until she knew somebody was looking at her. And then all of a sudden she couldn't walk straight. 
which doesn't happen from food poisoning no. unless you're in the process of throwing up. And so, um, yeah, it, so that happened. That was that Sunday. So she still wasn't able to, she wouldn't keep all of her the rest of that week, the next week either. So that was no. two weeks not keeping all of her. That was this huge thing. So Monday I was work from home. So I was home with Oliver that Monday anyway, but she would have kept him that Tuesday. So I asked Rick because I was trying to get my work done, that I had to do work from home and dealing with Oliver. I asked him if he would mind calling her or finding out if she was going to be able to keep him the next day, if she was better or whatever. So then she immediately caught an attitude with him about the fact that I didn't call her myself, keeping in mind, of course. She does never, she never communicates with me. She communicates solely through Rick. She has never called or texted me to ask me anything on her own ever in seven and a half years. So, um, which I wasn't doing it for any other reason other than it just made sense and he could do it. He had the time and I don't want to be bothered with it. So, um, anyway, so I texted her because I was annoyed. And I said, hey, you know, Rick mentioned it kind of bothered you. I didn't call you directly. I'm just trying to get some work done this morning. But one of the other things she had told Rick was that it would be easier for me to bring Oliver and pick him up. And so I texted her and I said, um, I said all of that. And then I said, you know, I don't mind. Um, I can, I said, and I, will abs I have absolutely no problem bringing and picking up Oliver. We will see you in the morning. Then she calls Rick. She can't keep him the rest of the week because she doesn't fill up to it. So then Rick texts her back and says, um, you know, is it because like you're not feeling up to it? And so I think at that point, that was when we tried to figure out you and Dawn trying to figure out like yeah. who was going to come keep him that Friday because Rick couldn't call out anymore and I couldn't work from home anymore. My job is not a work from home job. My boss is very flexible and understanding because she has small children and she knows what it feels like. Um, but she, um, you know, that, I mean, that only goes so far. You still have to be able to right. do what you're supposed to do for your job. And so, um, we're like scrambling to figure out what we're going to do. And by this point, I have already decided because when I had my conversation after the PJ Masks car incident with my mom, she says, you've got to do something about the situation. Mm -hmm. You do not sound good. You sound really upset and she goes and it doesn't sound like this is very good for you she was like you've got to find a way to fix it so that you are better she was like i've never heard you sound like this before mm -hmm. um you know she was like you've this this does not sound good you've got to do something to do better for yourself and so i had decided that i thought the only thing that would make sense even though it's going to really suck financially is if we put oliver in school daycare and so, um, so later in the week, Rick calls his mom to ask her just once again, to see if she can keep Oliver, see if her mind's changed. Right. And she outright tells him that the reason she's not keeping Oliver is because he didn't make a big enough deal out of her being sick. And so, uh, that's kind of where we've been with it for the last couple weeks. And it's exhausting. I don't have family here. So I think the biggest takeaway from all of these stories is that um, it really sucks because that's supposed to be like my family here. And I don't have it. I don't have any support from them. I don't have even a friendship, like a basic level friendship with them. Um, and I'm not respected as my role as Rick's wife. I'm not respected as a woman, as a human being, as, as a, a mother. mother. Like, I'm not respected at all. I'm, and, and it sucks because, like, I really thought that, you know, just given what I've had in my experiences with long-term boyfriends and stuff before that I thought for sure that like I was going to end up with in-laws that at least wanted me around. Um, yeah. Not ones that were going to tell him he didn't need to marry me and do all these other things to try to, it's a lot. And I, and it's, and it sucks because I, I get so tired of the, the poor me. And I told Rick, I was like, it's stressful. We had a very serious conversation about the financial piece of daycare. And I told him, I said, at the end of the day, I pay what we're going to pay a month for the stress relief that I'm about to experience. I said, cause, and I told him, I, I was very honest. I said, you're over here stressed out about money. I'm over here feeling good. I am so glad that this woman will no longer have any control over any part of my son's life. And that if I don't want to interact with her, I don't have to. It's just, but it's been so much. And that's one of the reasons that we decided to do this together is because like, I've literally been there from the beginning yeah. and like and it's affected even, you too it has absolutely like aside from keeping oliver because she you know decided that 
she wasn't going to and screw them. And aside from that, I enjoyed that time. Yeah, it was you know, good for them. Absolutely was amazing. But aside from that, like, it affects me emotionally too when I hear how emotional she is about the situation. Yeah. And like, I, it's just, it sucks because you always want your friends to be in the good places. Like, and it's really hard because I do have this good relationship with my mother-in-law. Yeah. And Mike has a good relationship with my mom. With her parents, yeah. You know, and it's really hard for me to, sometimes it's really hard for me to, like, wrap my head around how somebody, a mother in general, can be so passive-aggressively hateful to somebody who is her child. I mean, essentially, legally, Angel is one of her children. It, it, it's her son's wife. And how can you treat your son one way and his wife a different way? Like, that makes no sense to me. Like, it makes no sense. Yeah, Rick kind of had, like, an emotional breakdown over it, to be honest, because... This last time, This right? last time, because... And I think I said this to you, but, like, yeah. I don't think he really got it before now. No, because... And I said, I told him, I said, but you see how they're acting to you? I said, that's how every situation that's ever come yeah. up has been with, with me. Because this is the first time that it's been, like, on him that he's done that something. That he was the one. He was the one that did something wrong. And regardless of what the situation actually was, like, this is the first time that she completely focused it on him. And it's his fault that she's not keeping his child... Like, that's hard. Yeah. And I think it's it's really hard to take what I've been experiencing and kind of sum it up for people because yeah. it's it's really hard when you, like, I think mostly because, like, it's very hard going into a situation where, like, you have met someone that you love so much that you want to spend the rest of your life with and their family just does not want to see you together. Like, that's hard. Yeah. And then that translates into, well, you kind of redeemed yourself a little because you had a baby and we love the baby. But now we're also going to try to, or now I'm also going to try to be that baby's mom too. It's a very weird, like, it, or very strange, like, up and down emotions and hard to explain it. And women in general don't like to be made to feel like they're crazy because that's what society tells us we are all the time. You're not allowed to be angry. You're not allowed to be sad because if you are, you're crazy. And so it's such a triggering thing for us when people make us feel like we're being crazy. And so I will tell you that as emotionally draining as the last few weeks have been, it has also been very validating. Mm -hmm. To know that other people, which, and not like, you know, like Dawn and, and Melinda, they get it. They've, they've known this whole time because they've, they've seen there. it. Yeah. And so, um, but yeah, I think it's like, uh, it's just, it's nice to know that people are going, yeah, you know what? I know you, this isn't you, you've got to fix it. And especially coming from my parents who have tried so hard to be Switzerland this entire time. Um, and then even with like Rick understanding and, and Rick is, Rick has been supportive. Don't take anything that I've said as like him not being supportive, but I think like, before we had Oliver, it was so much easier to just dismiss the issues right. because it didn't really matter as far as like when I had to interact because if I didn't want to, I didn't have to. But right. if adding, a, adding a kid to that equation is, is a lot more difficult. And I really hope, had super high hopes that it was going to change. But you're right. When, when that last thing happened after I had tried so hard and I felt so connected, she would stay over and talk to me for hours. Mm -hmm. We were so close. And it, like, it really, it really hurt my heart. Like, it really bothered me. Yeah. And it took, I think you're right, I think it took me, like, it took me a little while to get to angry. It did. You were just so hurt at first. You were not angry at first. It took a little while. A little while. And, like, it's just so frustrating. Like, and even, we even talked about, like, when they started to come around again a few months later, like, that you'll... You'll never get back to that. No. Ever. I'm, I'm done. I don't work that way. No. Like, ever. Like, even if she had done everything she could to try to get back Ellie, um, if she had done everything she could to try to get back to that, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't work because of the way that it happened. Yeah. And she just completely disrespected and just 
threw it away. Yeah, it's, just, it wasn't just about me. That time, it was it impacted Oliver. Yeah. And, the, and like, my mom said this the other day about another family situation. Um, she said, you know, she broke it down as the woman in me and the mother in me. And yeah. the, the woman in me could have gotten past it and probably been a lot more friendlier and just gotten whatever. Mm -hmm. The mother in me can't forgive it. Yeah. I just can't. Because the reality is, you know, Oliver loves them, and that's fine. I mean, I'm sure they benefit from having him around. I'm sure he benefits in some ways of having them around. I would never argue otherwise. I have been immensely appreciative of the fact that she keeps Oliver because she absolutely doesn't have to. Right. And I've, I've vocalized that before, that I am grateful for that. And But, you know, in fact, the first Thanksgiving video we ever did for the channel, that was one of the things I was thankful for. Was my my relationship with my mother in law because oh, I had yeah. said, do you remember that? I had said um, that it wasn't always great, but that it was so great now, and that was two weeks, two or three weeks before it ended. Damn it, Angel! It is your fault. You <laughs> put it into the I universe. I jinxed it. You jinxed it. Jinxed it. Damn. Well, you already got a coke, so yeah. No, but yeah, I think it's, it's yeah, it's 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 hard, and it's hard to explain to people because. People have this mentality that because you have a kid, you have to. No, you don't. Um, I did a blog entry actually right after that happened um, on our website and uh, talked about how difficult of a decision it is to remove toxic people from your child's life. And some people feel like you have to let family around, and it's okay if you feel that way. I don't feel that way. My family, my entire life has always been the people I chose to make my family. So I am in a very different mindset. Um, and having said that, I would, like I said before, I would never take Oliver away from his grandparents unless they did something to hurt him or right. like, I don't know, hurt me. Like, unless it was something that was actually detrimental right. to him specifically. Um, but I, I do fully believe that he will get to an age where he will see it. And because Oliver and I are so close, He's not going to stand for someone treating me that way. Um, but, you know, for now, you know, well, we're going to do daycare. And we're going to see yeah. how it goes because I'm thinking they're going to be pissed. That's what I was about to say. Like, TBD on how that's going to be afterwards because, like, and it, one of the other things that's been so frustrating for me, for them, is that they they live literally... Two stop signs down the street. Three. Three stop signs down the street. It's almost a deciding factor in not getting this house, if I'm being honest with you. But you can walk to their house. It's hot outside. Nobody wants to do if that. It, but you if could. an emergency or something right. happens, like there are lifelines. They have this whole time he's been alive, you know, these three years, like they've been close and they've been able to have that, like, you know, they could, they could see him if they wanted to, right? But the other side of that is the other grandparents live two and a half hours away. And I think they don't realize how amazing they have had it for these three years that they live down the street and they, if, if you, if they were on terms where you could be like, yeah, come over whenever you want. You know, they could, but because they live down the street and that is such a big thing because like Aria's grandparents live three hours away and two and a half yeah. hours away. Yeah. You know, like we have to plan trips to see them. It's just like that time when you took Red home for Christmas for the first time. You planned a trip to go see your family because they don't live here and yeah. they've just kind of, they don't realize, I they can't. There's no way they possibly realize how good they have had it as grandparents and how lucky they have been as grandparents to be so close to their grandchild because that's not always the case. And they've thrown it away. More than once, More than once. Yeah. And I don't understand that. And then I'm just, I don't know how they're going to react when, because I don't know if they're going to feel like it's a personal attack on them. Or if they're going to be like, oh, okay, that's really great. Yeah. It, I, I, I'm it's going to be a drastic one way or the other. They're I not, think so, too. They're and not going to just be like, okay. Yeah, and I think the other thing that's going to happen is I think that Ellie will try to overcompensate with time by trying to see him other times. 
which isn't going to be a thing. Mm -mm. Rick and I have already discussed that in detail. So, mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's already like the only time that they get is dinner bedtime. And that's, a, that's very, that's so common with working families, right? Mm -hmm. You get the time between when you get home and mm -hmm. they go to bed and it's not very much time. So no. the weekends for you guys, the weekends, especially you when Rick's working, it's just you and Ollie, it's just the two of them. And mm -hmm. so that is their time together. Like we, we, we haven't come over for play dates before because she's like, no, <laughs> which is fine. I totally understand yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, and it's, yeah, and I, that's, and I, and I told Rick, I was like, you know, after like a month or two when things have calmed down and I might feel a little differently, like yeah. if she wanted to come get him in the morning so I could get some extra sleep, like I'm not saying that this will be a never thing, right. but I think what the expectation that they, that they're going to have is going to be, it's not going to be reality. I so. do think uh, they are going to expect the same amount of time that they've had. And that's just not a realistic thing. No. Like, they could have continued to have had that time. For at least another year. Yeah. Until they started pre-K. Yeah. And it's not, a, it's not to punish them, by the way. No. It's not to punish them. It's what's going to be best for this family. Right. Well, and the only reason they got the time they did before was because they kept him. That's right. the only reason. Right. So it wouldn't have been like that otherwise anyway. So we're not really taking anything away yeah. as far as it that was, goes. It was like definitely bonus time because, again, they lived down the street and they were yeah. able to do that. So it's just, I don't know. I'm really curious to see how it goes, but I'm going to feel so good when it's done. Yeah. I already know what gif I'm going to post on Facebook. <laughs> Spoiler alert. It's from The Wizard of Oz. <sighs> but yeah, and I, and I think like... We try to make a point to do, um, like, serious conversations about things yeah. that we deal with as parents because I, you, short of some episodes of Cops or some, like, lighthearted articles on, you know, Facebook or something, there, I don't know that I've seen a lot of stuff, people talking about that in depth, about, like, their experiences with, like, family members that mm -hmm. are close enough like that, that it impacts their mental health. Like, yeah. it puts them in such a bad place, and it does. It stresses me out. I've cried countless times. I've, you know, and I've, I just, I feel like I'm so close to that being over. Right. I'm trying to remember that, like, they're not going away, but, like, it just is such a game changer as far as like dynamic goes. So, and that's what I, that's when we talked about it, that was what I, I kind of wanted to do was just be honest about the situation and what's going on and how I feel about it. And not everybody's going to get it and that's cool, but it's very hard to put seven years into a video and really help paint the entire picture. Um, I think some things are very telling. I kind of picked, that's kind of what I picked. I picked the things that I thought would be telling enough of the situation, but yeah. I just, um, I, I do so much for my family and I would do anything for my family. I'm not going to continue to be treated like a piece of trash. Like I'm just not. So that's kind of where we are. Yep. With everything. <laughs> this has been an emotional video. I'm exhausted. I'm going to bed. I gotta watch this show off my face and then I'm going to bed. Um, also, he didn't turn the dryer back on. It's really he did quiet. not turn the dryer back on. No. But, um, thanks for staying until the end. <laughs> we know it's been a really long video, but sometimes they, it needs to be a long video because it's just that important. We yeah. originally talked about trying to do a family video of like, things that, like, things that I'm going through and things that she's going through, and I think I just decided that this was more important, and that we need to talk about this. Yeah. Because it is so important, and it does happen in so many families, and people just don't talk about it, so... And then no one knows what to do, because everyone's telling them to just suck it up and deal with it. Yeah. And I will tell you, that's not what I did. I put my foot down, and I made yep. a decision that I thought was not only better for my son, but better for my marriage and better for me as a person, as a human being. Yep, because that's what's important is your family. Yeah. And your mental health and your child's mental health. And, yeah, that's a... That is it in a nutshell, I guess. Um, so, you know, give us a thumbs up.
like this video, <laughs> subscribe to our channel, hit the bell icon. You know, we don't always talk about like super serious stuff, but when we do, it's because it's important. And we hope that you enjoy, I don't know that enjoy is the right word. Get something out of. Yes. Like, if there's something that one of us is going through, one of our friends is going through, that you're going through, we hope that that helps you. And that's what we're here for. Um, if you did get something out of this, comment down below. Let us know. Like, you don't have to reveal your life story to us. But if you want to, sure, yeah, okay, let know. We're here for you. Um, follow us on social media at Mama Slimmy on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye, moms.